we are back with Chaplain Bill Goodrich. We're talking about God Cares Ministry today. Excited to have him here. And um, we want to encourage folks uh, to go out into nursing homes and just love on the elderly. Mm -hmm. um, so Bill, welcome. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Bill, what is the mission of Good, uh, God Cares Ministries? Our mission is to provide quality, Christ-centered spiritual care in any senior care home that uh, is open to the gospel. All right, and uh, how do people get involved with your ministry? Because it's volunteer driven, is that correct? It is volunteer driven and we are, we don't have a lot of marketing going on. What we do is present it whenever, wherever we can and we let people know that there's a great need inside the nursing homes. There are residents who are lonely, who lack purpose, who long for a friend to hold their hand and encourage them to put their trust in Jesus. It's amazing how open they are when presented in a kind, respectful way and in, in a way that helps them know that they are really cared for. And so we uh, teach Christians to go in and share the love and the word of Jesus through one-to-one -one visits and or group services. And we uh, provide resources that are giant print, uh, devotionals, tracts, hymnals for group services. We provide a lot of resources so that uh, a Christian can have all that they need to get inside. But we also are teaching Christians how to get inside because there is a protocol inside the homes. Who do you meet with? Who do you uh, get permission from? And how you uh, work through the, the, uh, just the culture inside the home. So you are the founder of God Cares of Ministry. And how did you end up starting this up? And you know, why do you have a passion for going into the nursing homes? Many years ago, about 40 years ago, I was a young Christian and looking for where God wanted me to serve. I have a mechanical carpentry, kind of an engineering background, so I knew it would be doing something like that. Mm. But lo and behold, nothing was working. Wherever I went, there was just not an open door. And one day I heard on the radio uh, an interview with an activity director who was looking for volunteers at a nursing home. So I thought, well, let me just go and see if I can use this as a starting place. And uh, well, that was a starting place 40 years ago. And I, I was given the responsibility of bringing residents out for a church service on Sunday afternoons. And in that time, I began to see the spiritual poverty inside the hearts and minds of the people. And I would pray, and it, <laughs> it was funny because my prayer was, Lord, tell the pastors how to do this, you know? <laughs> and I was kind of complaining, actually. But the Lord opened up a door for me to begin sharing the gospel through one of those services. And uh, in time, I just kept learning more and doing more and reaching more. And then we started bringing other people in who wanted to be involved. And then I got too busy for my secular work, so I resigned. After about nine years of doing this, I resigned and we started God Cares Ministry, which would be 30 years ago. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, personally in my own life, um, my brother Bobby, he passed away last year and um, uh, spent a lot of time, about six months in a nursing home with him. And uh, he was very uh, blessed in the fact that he had a loving, kind, caring family, Christian family uh, that came around him and uh, ministered to him and uh, shared the gospel with him on more than one occasion because you want to make sure that uh, while a person has made a public profession of their faith, sometimes sure. what they really believe uh, is a time of reckoning when you realize that you're coming to the end of your life. But um, uh, the thing that impressed me the most or left an impression on me was going there day in and day out for about six months um, just how few people actually had any visitors yeah. uh, some family you know maybe the obligatory once a week but many people not even that and uh, so I did feel that pain of those people and you know 
if you think about laying in a bed, you know, literally 24 hours a day or very little outside of that, you know, uh, life can become very uh, difficult and have a, people feel a lack of purpose and you have to go and cheer them on. Yes. Um, but I imagine that my experience with my brother Bobby, uh, who's with the Lord today, uh, was something that was compelling in your own life. Would you share a story maybe of um, how the Lord worked in your life to draw you closer to the Lord through the ministry that you were performing? Yes, I would like to, if you don't mind, touch on what you just said, because approximately 80% of the residents receive less than one visit a week. I mean, I'm sorry, they receive less than one visit a month. Less than one visit a month. Yeah. I, I can believe that after walking through the hallways of the nursing home my brother was in, yes. And of those visits, less than half are sharing the, the Word of God with them. And it's not always like a gospel gets saved presentation. It's also how Jesus wants to take their hand and help them in the midst of their reality of loneliness, of uh, unresolved conflicts, of the need for peace and hope, and just life in Christ. And so we go in not to just evangelize, but we go in to disciple. And that is our, our biggest concern. But for me personally, I have found life in this mission work because God has created us to be loved. He has made it so that we need love, but he has also created us that we have to give love also. And when those two pieces are working in our lives, we experience the fullness of life. And so the nursing home mission field is a place where you don't get something back tangible. What you get back is friendships, relationships. Today in heaven, I have thousands of friends <laughs> that I look forward to reun reuniting with. Wow. And that, you know, friendships, you know, that's something that we all crave at any age, at yes. any stage in life. And um, so it's a beautiful thing that you're encouraging people to, to do and get involved with. Um, you know, and I know that you were on Focus on the Family. You, your, your interview actually was best of 2023. I had a, the opportunity to watch it and um, you shared some beautiful stories on there and um, just very encouraging. Do you have a, a favorite story that you know you could share in this limited time? Uh, during the pandemic, when we were all shut out of the homes because of uh, the safety protocols, I found the way in. I called the administrator, which is totally off protocol, right? But I called the administrator and said, I would like to come in and help your staff provide non-personal uh, care. And he was all excited. He s had me sign in for uh, passing ice water to the residents. <laughs> and so one day I had zero access into the home. The next day I had 100% access wow. with all the residents. And so I would uh, put the ice water together for them, pass it to them. I always drew a smiley face on the cup and that gave me a little bit of opportunity to speak to them. Then after about a month or so, I started giving them these giant print scripture sheets that we created. And they have a little preface on the top about the topic, then uh, several scriptures related to it, and then a prayer on the bottom. And on the back was a word puzzle. So when I gave the water, I offered one of these to them. Well, there was one lady who I would give it to. She was very quiet. And uh, about three or four months into this, somebody said, would you go and visit Janice? And I said, yeah, I actually know who that is. She's very quiet. Well, they told me that she's been going through a really hard time. Anyway, I went into her room. I, I started trying to talk to her a little more. She would not talk to me. She was very quiet, but we prayed for her. About a month after that, she said, could you talk for a few minutes? And she said, I want you to know that when you gave me this paper, before you were out of the room, before you left the room, it was in the garbage can. Mm. I just want you to know that I just did not want anything to do with God. I was going through a dark night of the soul. I was a believer, but I just went through a terrible depression. And she's kind of angry with God. Yeah, just mainly just fearful that she was not gonna go to heaven because of several issues that happened in her life. Anyway, she said that one day I decided to read the paper and the Lord spoke to me 
and from then on she's been reading the paper and reading other books and now she's ministering in that home as a believer reaching out to other residents who are struggling it's such a beautiful thing to watch him it work is you're life. giving them water but and living water the living you're water giving them the yes. truth so and it's incredible what just a piece of paper with the word of god giving them to residents at their own will i mean we don't force it on them but they are so open to scripture that is related to their needs you can't go in and share like you would with a youth group or a other kinds of ministry it is unique and that's why we do the training so that people understand how to present the gospel with them but they are so wide open and it's interesting that you would say youth group because you know we hear a lot of times in the church how you know if if somebody doesn't become a christian by a certain age then you're not likely to reach them for christ but um, I'm guessing you don't believe that. <laughs> I would like to say that is not true at all. Right. 80% of the people we work with, if the, if, the, if the volunteers follow the principles that we teach, and they've been given by God, it's not my invention, but they're scriptural, scripturally based and Christ-centered, and we pray before we go in. And when, when they follow that, 80% of the residents will take Jesus' hand, and that's what we do. We don't evangelize per se, and we're not trying to convert. What we're trying to do is help them understand that Jesus holds his hand out to them. And here's some verses that relate to your need. Would you take his hand and trust him for the answer to those verses? And when they put their trust in him by praying with us, we teach them to pray, they're taking his hand, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. I think it's a wonderful statement that you said that you look forward to being with thousands of people <laughs> as you've dedicated your, basically your whole adult life to uh, ministering to people in the nursing homes. And many thousand volunteers too who yeah. are, have gotten involved. And you know, it's interesting. A person will start, maybe they find out this is not where God wants me. But those who get hooked, we call it, they're in and they don't leave. You couldn't pry them out with a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I well, love how it. can people find more out about your ministry and get involved? Well, they can come to our website, GodCaresMinistry.com, or call our office at 440-930-2173, and we will provide for them a getting started packet that uh, will help them understand some really basic principles for getting started. Uh, who to contact, how to get uh, things going. And we are there to coach them along. We, we can help them. Uh, sometimes we can connect them with somebody who's already involved so they can shadow that person and learn a little bit. But we provide training, resources, whatever a person needs. And if they look on our website, they'll see all of those, all of those things. All right, so God Cares Ministry is headquartered out of Avon Lake, Ohio. Yes. Uh, but you are working all throughout the United States. Yes, okay. yes. We have That's over 3,500 volunteers active, actively serving right now throughout the country all right. and Canada. Well, hopefully yeah. we can help grow that number. Thank you. So thank you for joining us today and sharing your story and your, your heart for the nursing home uh, and, and you know, folks in there. And um, so just we pray that the Lord would continue to bless you in the ministry. Amen. 